I'm not going to just read from this, don't worry. Uh, but I didn't plan, so i got some bullet points I want to bring up. Anarchy! <laughs> Spontaneous order. I don't need plans. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello. hello. The thing that I want to talk about is uh, how we get from where we are now to our lovely idea of what voluntarism our, our, our world of everything's peaceful and, and people are happier and more prosperous and all that stuff, right? That some might say is a utopia, but I think there's still going to be you know, problems that we can deal with. Um, but how do we get there? And I think, I mean, most of the voluntarists that I met, they want to get there in a peaceful manner. And we don't necessarily think, and now I'm going to just speak for myself, I don't necessarily think that we can, that, that it's right to get there via any kind of violence, because that's like building a foundation of, you know, that's a, a foundation of violence and then building on top of that peace, and it just doesn't make sense to me. And, and of course, we could go philosophical and, and um, practical with that and in both directions. I just see it not working. So from my perspective, there are many ways. And, and you know, so I'm going to just put out there some of the ways that, that I think of and that many of them I'm working on, and um, and, and as, as I state each one, I want to go ahead and get a little bit of feedback before I go on to the next one. Um, so the first one is educate yourself. So I, I think that it's important that, that as much as we can, we, we read you know some of the, the classics and some of the new people and, and, and learn about things like economics and philosophy and uh, all that stuff. And you know, I can name some authors like Rothbard, or Bastiat, or Hayek. Um, there's, there's, I mean, a bunch. Um, oh, okay, so I've written them down, so great. <laughs> uh, Larkin Rose uh, is, is a newer guy that I don't know who's heard of him. Um, I, I love a book that he wrote uh, all about authority. It's called The Most Dangerous Suspicion. It's a really thin, easy read. Superstition. <laughs> superstition, yeah, the most dangerous superstition. Um, Adam Kokesh, he actually wrote a book called Freedom that's really thin and hard hitting. I think it's great for for um, newbies. Like if you're if you have a libertarian friend or or whatever, any, they don't even have to be anything, but anything but voluntarists. I would hand them that book. With us, it's kind of speaking to the choir, um, but it's succinct and it nails every point that I can think of that you will you will encounter when you're talking to a statist. And yeah, so that's Adam Kokesh. Um, and Economics in One Lesson, to me, is the best book in economics that I've read, as far as just being really simple and easy to, to grok and fast read. Um, and there's stuff that goes deeper, you know, Mises, Basha, Hayek, Rothbard, like I said. Okay, so that's the educate yourself part. And I'm going to pause now, and I'd like to get any kind of comments that people might have. Yeah, uh, I kind of wanted to... Uh, throw out there that I think that the first thing you brought up, which is the whole using violence um, to try and create a peaceful society, right? That's a, I think that that was a really good way to start because I think that's something that a lot of us in here struggle with is I, my experience, I mean, the connotation of anarchism and anarchists is that we want chaos and that we're generally violent, but in fact, most anarchists and libertarians, I mean, they're the most peaceful people I've ever encountered and that's all we want is peace for everyone but a lot of us uh, I think that I've interacted with have we I mean even I struggle with this it's hard to see how can we get to that without at some point there being violence and I think you brought up a good point that it sets a kind of an awkward foundation and probably one that that may or may not work well or, or so I, I think it's a cool point and uh, it's something that I've thought a lot about and struggle with to see how we get to the other side without some form of violence, even though it's counter to the overall goal. Thank you. Anybody else on that one? Want to throw in an author or a book that you've read? You really think people? Samuel should... Konkin. Uh, Konkin. Yeah, yeah, Konkin stuff for the uh, for people interested in agorism was uh, something I recently. Konkin. <laughs> for, uh, for me, it's, it was mostly Molyneux. Molyneux, Stefan Molyneux. Yeah, that's great. And also, Derek Rose has this book, The Conscious oh. Resistance, that they oh, yeah. sell here. I just started it, but I really love it. Like, page one, right off the bat. It's really cheap. <laughs> Derek Rose, a local 
and yeah. the conscious yeah. resistance. Yeah. Resistance. He's also got a website called the Conscious Resistance. And go to his website. Yeah, he's got some good stuff. Okay, I want to move on. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, that was great too. Yeah. Uh, media and propaganda, I think, are powerful. And so, with like animations, articles, conversations, I think we can change minds. I think I tend to believe that little things matter. They stack up. So often, you know, people are like, "Well, I don't want to do anything because, you know, what do I matter? I'm just one person." But I, I really think that every single person you talk to somebody, and you might turn them on to a whole new world that they've never even thought of, and who are they going to tell? Okay. So I think little little things matter. So any kind of media, uh, the, if it's just debates online, sh resharing something, liking an article, even that I think can help. Even though it's tiny, it can help. Uh, okay, so communication and empathy. So that goes really deep. I could talk hours on that, but I'll, I'll try to keep it short. I mean, whatever I hear is like, well, spreading it using nonviolent communication is one tool that I, I enjoy. It's a book called Nonviolent Communication, and really it's, it's, it's a great way of uh, solving conflict, um, communicating in a way that shows you're respecting choice. Like nonviolent communication, the way it, it, it overlaps volunteerism in a big way. In, in the whole choice department especially. Um, so I'd investigate that and you could talk to me about that. I've written some articles that, that talk all about how they intersect and, and, and how it helps. Um, so state, oh, before that, peaceful parenting. So, and that, that also has a lot of overlap. But right there, um, if, we're, if we're looking at wanting to create a world down the road and peacefully, then if we raise our kids in a peaceful manner, and that is not, um, it's not permissive parenting, okay? That's where I think a lot of people, and, we, and it's like, usually it's conservatives or whatever, they've got to reassure that, that, that um, uh, peaceful parenting is not permissive. You know, it's, it's, it's a recognition, for one thing, of a kid having autonomy and wanting pretty normal, the things that adults want, but they just can't speak it. So if you think about it, you know, an example I like to give is like, most children in our culture, um, before they can speak, they're picked up and moved and told when to wake up and go to bed and what to eat, and they're, they're controlled. And if you try to, you put yourself in that situation, and I think you might find that uh, you're, you're pretty frustrated. You might have a tantrum from time to time. But I, again, that's a topic that can go on forever, and I want to keep moving. Is any, okay, now I'm going to pause now for some comments or questions, because I've gone over a couple things. I have a quick comment on. Uh... Uh, on children, and uh, I'm actually a dog walker, and I see the same thing in dogs. Like people are putting their dogs in these pens all day, and then get upset when like they get home and they act out, or like they ripped up their pillow, or like spilled their water. It's like, what do you expect if somebody you take away all their autonomy, take away their decision making power? And of course, they're gonna have a tantrum, just like you said with children. So I think it extends to other creatures too. Sure. Yeah. And people, you know, it's like I like to think everybody sees everything, you know, or people see things, and. So you see somebody, uh, it, it kind of, it bugs me when I see somebody struggling with this animal down the street. I'm not an animal rights activist whatsoever, but still there's the symbol, symbolism there. Sure, if they're treating the dogs like that, how are they treating the, the people in their mm -hmm. lives too? Oh yeah, and that reminds me of the peaceful parenting thing. I spoke to a libertarian leaning toward volunteers on them the other day, and he was talking about how he was controlling his kid in all these ways. And, and I, I asked him, you know, he took it okay. Well, we'll see how he took it, but, um, but it's, it's funny to me. It's, it's a matter of integrity and, and not that everybody has to have the same value for integrity that I do, but there, I think it's, it's kind of funny. Somebody's like massively, con well, massively, they're controlling their child in various ways that they don't really have to, if they're mm -hmm. to think long enough and come up with other strategies. And, and yet they are, they want their child to grow up to be a person who will be independent and, yeah. <laughs> and not, you know, bow down to authority and all that, you know, so I think that's kind of funny. Um, okay, uh, state education, so there I would, I, I recommend looking into homeschooling and even unschooling, if y'all don't know what that is, it's, again, that's something that's all about respecting another human being's um, autonomy or anything else, and, and, and even uh, sort of a, the belief that all people, that people, people tend to be curious, and that a child will be curious, and a child will um, make mistakes, but also they will learn on their own, they can. You know? um, 
So, and on my website, clearsay.net, you'll find articles on all these things. Um, and little animations I've made to show these things happening and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, another would be undermining the need for government watchdogs. So, uh, <laughs> peer to peer review apps like Yelp, for example, um, Consumer Reports, none of, that, that stuff already exists, but we can always make more of them and we can always support the ones that do exist. And so, stuff like that, it's, you know, undermining is one word that's, you know, but yeah, you guys get it, right? <laughs> okay, um, peer to peer sharing and trading, Bitcoin, Lyft, Uber. Um, Airbnb. So there's already that kind of stuff that, that I think we can support and even create more of. And I'm, I'm working on something called free trash right now. You could ask me about that. Um, it's sort of a combination of all those things. And I'm welcoming and kind of help. Because um, right, right now I'm working on a, uh, a promo for so I can get money, like Kickstarter or whatever. Like I could write the whole app myself, but it would take years. So I want help. <laughs> um, security. Private security organizations, and we know those exist to to some degree or other. So we can create more of those. We can support the ones that exist, so that yeah, people are less dependent on police, things like that. Um, but finally, the last two: access to information. Um, we have the internet, and. I feel like I'm using up a lot of my time, so I'm going to go ahead and go jump to the last one, which is self-sufficiency. So there's there's a thing that you know sometimes from the outside people will say, oh, you guys want everybody to be completely self-sufficient, and, and that would suck for people who can't like hunt for their food or whatever. And of course, <laughs> of course, we all know that's not the case. That we would be still, you know, specializing and relying on each other in various ways, interdependent. Um, and that said, of course, I think it is better if we can all learn, or many of us can learn different things like gardening, martial arts, um, negotiation skills, um, uh, sustainable living, all the things involved with that. Um, so there's, there's many ways that we can bring ourselves off of the grid and even be an example. Even, Learn these things so we can teach other people, so, or so we can be valuable in a certain kind of community. Um, so that's that's the last item on my list, and I'd like to again ask for some questions or comments or whatever. <coughs> so we have. Yeah. Could you uh, repeat your website and uh, how we can find more of your ideas and stuff? Clearsay.net. And that website is divided between nonviolent communication type stuff and volunteerism type stuff, and then the, the mix and parent parenting stuff, unschooling. That's about it. Thank you. Yeah. What's uh, the biggest thing you're focusing on out of that list? Uh, biggest couple things. I'm creating an app for that people can just like type in some kind of statement, like ideally something somewhat violent or challenging that somebody said to them so I could paste in a text and it comes back the response. So somebody's like, you're such an ass, your armpits always stink. <laughs> then I come back with a suggested phrase like, oh wow, do you really, you, it sounds like you really value um, cleanliness or good smells. <laughs> uh, and so it empathizes, just, it, it, it's like judo or I, it's more like um, Aikido for, for language. Um, <laughs> but it's also empathizing. Um, so yeah, that app and the free tribes that I want to create. You talked about supporting companies, namely Uber, but I've heard that they've been able to sidestep some things in the law. What are your thoughts about that? I don't know. Uh, I actually drive for Lyft like once a month just so I can stay being an employee. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to even spend the time doing that, but. I don't know. I know a lot about Uber, uh, Lyft, but not as much about Uber. I mean, I've heard about different countries. They're, are you speaking of France, maybe? Here in the United States. Or and what kind of laws or rules? <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just heard that there are some things that, like for instance, I know that uh, Uber doesn't have to um, buy their vehicles and whatnot. So there are some things they size up there. Um, they don't have to, they didn't really cater to people that were disabled, um, which is something that taxi companies have to do by law. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a few things that people were kind of not happy that Uber was doing mm -hmm. um, that other companies that were specifically taxi cab companies had to do. 
Yeah. So they basically paid people that were, um, I guess people that were working for Uber, they also made a ton of money in the beginning. They were making like $70,000, $90,000. And then they ended up taking more of their money, more of their money. So now they're basically, I, I'm quoting them, making it next to nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's, in my mind, I guess, not as great as it once was. Ah, so you want more fairness between the yes. company and the drivers? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I bet there'll be a million people here that know, or ten, that know more about that than I do. I'm willing to talk to you about that. Um, so, any other questions or input? Let's say the subject you mentioned are like education, um, dissemination of information, um, in general, you know, ways to kind of you know get around the existing frameworks and say to consider deleterious. Um, open source can be very good for all those things. You know, open source mm -hmm. not just code, but nearly anything. Um, in fact, you know, books, documents. Uh, like CAD drawings, things like that. Um, because often, like, I, some of this might be like the best defense against egregious use of patents possible. Like, they just make a copy left or a viral license where you literally cannot legally um, go and patent on, like, or use it up and release it, your own um, materials at a given time. So, this thing is like one sort of um, system seems to be working quite well already. Now, obviously, we want to look into for a variety of materials. Yay. Yeah, because IP, I see, is something detrimental to our cause and humanity even. So uh, any ways that, pe ways that people can fight, fight against that. I, I'd rather think of a more peaceful way of putting that, but uh, <laughs> promote a uh, free flow of information. Is that, would that be what you're saying? Yeah, among other things, yes. Yeah. Plus, yeah. of course, adult things. You get lots of ideas going in there at once. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of new to a lot of these ideas, but I am pretty familiar with Uber and a lot of union issues. I used to work for companies that made to deal with the union pretty frequently. And uh, just to, to kind of touch on her point, like so the situation with Uber in California is a lot of, well, one of the situations is a lot of the workers are saying, okay, we're working full time with you, we, we want benefits. And, you know, most other companies are required to provide benefits to their workers. So like I said, I'm kind of new to the ideas that you're, you're bringing up, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on something like that, where you've got a, an organization that's consolidated a lot of resources through innovation and through their own means, but now they're sort of able to leverage those resources to take advantage of other people. Like, what are your thoughts on that? No, no. Um, my, my time is, is up. <laughs> no, no, no. Feel free to answer that question. Uh, We'll say last question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't really have a good answer for that because again I'm not super familiar with them. And and also I just I, I feel like I've used up my time. Okay. I'm happy to talk to you person okay. about it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Scott. Now next up we have Michael Fielding. And Michael would like to say that Michael lives in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I live out in the forest on East Riverside, so it's my way of kind of protesting the title system. But uh, I'll talk a little bit more about moments of anarchy. Um, 